Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Tea with Brittany Lee. I am so excited that everyone is here this morning. We have had record attendance for Tea with Brittany Lee this month. I am just so excited because um, it really seems like Tea with Brittany Lee is being helpful. Hopefully that's the case. <laughs> um, but I wanted to just go ahead and say thank you to everybody who um, has been showing up and registering for the webinar and watching our recap um, on the blog on Fridays. It's just been really encouraging. And um, I would really, I just wanted to encourage you guys to send me an email, Brittany at virtualresortmanager.com. If you have anything that you want us to cover, um, because, you know, coming up with topics can be a little bit difficult sometimes because you want to make sure that you're getting the most bang for your buck. So if there's something that you guys really would love to see me cover or, you know, somebody you want me to interview, let me know and I'll do my very best. I'll put I'll put pedal to the metal and see if I can make it happen. Um, so this morning, I am really honored to um, welcome our guest, um, Maureen Reagan. She is a um, rental manager, and um, I'm going to see if I can get my slide here. Um, so we're going to be talking about how to make sure homeowners always choose you okay um and obviously we have maureen reagan she is a veteran rental manager she's the author of the rental game um which is an awesome book it's got tons of funny stories about being a rental manager i'm sure a lot of you can relate to um some of her stories um one of my favorite stories in her book was uh she talked about you know there there was this guest who showed up and they had one of their friends had you know just up and died on the golf course and they they brought him to the rental office and they were like what do we do and she Maureen just gave a little story about it so if you want to hear the ending to the story and see what happened then you'll need to get her book and read it it's really good um and actually at the end of the webinar after our question time I am going to actually be doing a drawing out of the attendees on the webinar so five of you lucky peeps will win one of Maureen's books um, and you'll just need to send me your email me your name and your address so that Maureen can send you your copy of the book um, and Probably one of the more exciting things about Maureen as well is that she is the president-elect of the VRMA currently, and in 26, at the end of 2016, she will become the president of the VRMA. So she has a lot of insider info and a lot of knowledge and skill in, in the industry. So welcome to the webinar, Maureen. I'm really glad to have you on today. Um, well, thank you. For everybody who doesn't know what Maureen looks like, this is the beautiful Maureen, um, rental manager since 1983. And um, tell us a little bit about yourself, Maureen. Hit some of these hit some of these points for me on the on the slide. Well, I uh, started my business in 1983, as you mentioned, and uh, it's on the coast of Maine. It's um, a really lovely, lovely area. Brittany and I were talking about it just before we went online and I've invited her to come up and visit the area and that goes for anyone. I, it's just such a great place to be. But we have probably one of the shortest uh, vacation rental seasons of most companies in the country, I'd say. We have July and August and that is our rental season. So it, uh, it takes a little adjusting. But uh, I love the business and uh, I've met some of the most wonderful people in this business. And I've been fortunate that uh, my daughter, uh, Jennifer Thibodeau, is my partner. So I've been able to work with family. And that sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. But <laughs> we <laughs> always manage so to make sister. it work. <laughs> and that's, that's your daughter, Jennifer, on the left with her two sons, um, Aiden and, oh, man, I forgot it already. Uh, it's all right, Jack. Jack. Uh, Aiden, Aiden is the little hockey player, and uh, Jack play. Uh, these this picture is about three years old. Uh, Jack is now like six foot f something, and uh, uh, looks like a linebacker. So he's wow. the football guy. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. And then down on the um, on the right hand side, we have you and your beautiful daughter Jennifer, who um, I believe Jennifer was going to be on the webinar. So shout out to Jennifer. Hey Jennifer. <laughs> and um, can you explain this picture up on the right hand side, um, up on the top? Because I wanted everybody to hear about this because I thought it was so cool. Yeah, we have a uh, we enter a contest every year, and we have a, a, one of the things that we utilize is a 
survey with our guests and uh, ask them to vote for us as uh, the best of the best in the region for vacation rentals. And we've won that every single year since they opened that category in our area. And uh, this was, I think, our, our it, was, it was an anniversary year. It might have been our fifth or our tenth year of winning it. And so we got our whole team together and had a big cake and party and had a good time. And uh, we had a banner made that just says, we're simply the best. If you remember that old Tina Turner song. Yeah, I do. That's great. I love it. That is so amazing. Well, we are so glad to have you on this morning. And I hope everybody um, now knows and loves Maureen as much as I do. We have had so much fun getting ready for this webinar with all of our pre-webinar, um, you know, meetings and everything. It's just been so much fun. So thank you again so much, Maureen. And I'm going to go ahead and dive okay. right in. So how do you get homeowners to pick you? Well, you know, the first thing you could do is offer them some big bucks. Oh, I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> or a, a date with Leo. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I'll take that, please. <laughs> yeah, me too. But if all else fails, then uh, I have a special look I give them. <laughs> Never fails. <laughs> I have to say, when you sent me those pictures, I just died laughing. I thought it was the funniest thing I'd ever seen in my life. So <laughs> I, I think that I think that the look is probably the way to go for most people. I think so too. You need to you need to master the look if you're going to be a rental manager. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but uh, seriously, you know, I mean, there are a lot of great ways to get homeowners, and we'll touch on a lot of them, but I think the most important one is um, word of mouth. Uh, that's what you, you know, will probably find that uh, your existing homeowners uh, are your best source of um, to get new homeowners and I always thank them for their business and then I remind them that we want those referrals and it doesn't hurt to offer them an incentive once in a while you know um, we've done a few things like um, you know a decrease in commission or a, a gift item um, and then um, the software in, that we use, VRM, can be very helpful by adding uh, additional information to our monthly statements. Um, and they also have a welcome home function, which uh, we use a lot. But um, it's great for periodic mailings and a lot more uh, to your existing homeowners. That's so awesome that you were talking about Welcome Home because we're actually going to have a full webinar next month on how you can use Welcome Home to make busy season a breeze. Um, the actual title is Welcome Home, um, Making uh, Customers Happy. And uh, it's really interesting how Welcome Home has been so many of our rental managers have reached out and said, you know, that how much they love Welcome Home and how easy it makes their life in the busy season. And, um, you know, we were just talking about in the morning, in the morning meeting this morning, um, Pete was actually saying that you're one of the people that uses Welcome Home really well. So I'm very excited next month to have Mike Mueller on with us um, talking about Welcome Home and how people can can use that. So that's awesome. Um, all right. So. How do you find new homeowners? Well, I think uh, if you move on to the next slide, I probably uh, talked about that one. But, uh, yeah. you know, the other sources that we use um, are, um, and this is a big one, we use referrals from other businesses. We yeah. do a lot of cross-marketing, and we have a program called the Seaside Club Card. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we go to area businesses that we know our guests would like to utilize and owners, and uh, we ask them to offer our guests and owners, uh, you know, a discount of some sort or an incentive, like it might be a free appetizer with dinner, or it might be 10% off a pound of fudge, or a yeah. discount on an attraction or something. And we'll put them on our website, and then we also give every single guest a club card, we like a little credit card, mm -hmm. and uh, a brochure that tells them where it can be used and what discounts they get. And we give this to another business uh, for free, but that other business has to have our brochures in their business and our information on their website. That's the exchange that they get. Yeah. So, um, you know, we get a lot of um, goodwill from that gesture, and yeah. um, 
people will pick it up as well as the business owners because the business owners are giving out the information because we're doing a lot for them. And you know, we have an ulterior motive, obviously, because we want our guests to have uh, to spend their money in the area, to stay there longer, and want to come back next year. If they've done a lot of things there, they're going to have a good time, and that's where they're going to choose to come back to. And so it works in a lot of different ways, and the owners use it as well. So if they go out to dinner and they can get, you know, um, a discount or some sort, they're happy as well, and they know that we're really heavily marketing. So yeah. the referrals we get from that is quite large, and um, it's a program that takes a little to get started, but once you've got it going, uh, we have uh, a wonderful woman in our staff who uh, started it again for us. We used to do it years ago, and then we kind of let it go, uh, but she started it up last year and uh, really just went to town in a very short period of time and kudos to Mary if she's out there. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, I really love that you mention that um, you give this to your homeowners as well because that is something that a lot of people talk about doing things like this for their guests, but I've never heard any rental managers talk about doing those things for their homeowners as well, you know, because that gives them a real sense of what the guest is really getting when they come and stay with you. And so that can really help homeowners understand all the work that you're putting into making their property something that's enticing for people to come back to year after year. So that's really amazing. Absolutely. Um, and I think that this next slide, oh, yep, here we go. This is one of the ones that I really wanted to talk to you about. Um, I just loved hearing about this when you were talking to me about it in the in the interview. Um, but what charities do you support? Well, we, we support all of our local charities like, you know, softball leagues and, uh, you know, anything else that comes along in a small way. But uh, what we decided to do um, was to do something – that was meaningful to our staff and this actually uh, started off with the 9-11 uh, event and when that happened we all felt like we really wanted to do something but um, you know we didn't have enough money to make a, a huge difference but we uh, thought about it one of our staff came up with the idea that you know maybe the survivors families or the uh, responders families would like to be able to get away and come up to Maine and have some time. So we did that for several years and it was so incredible, it was unbelievable. So we did it again about a few years back after the um, Iran and Iraq wars and uh, we offer a free two night stay at any of our um, homeowners properties that allow us to, um, for any of the folks that come back from the service and they're transitioning back into their home lives and sometimes that can be a really difficult period for them and yeah. it just gives them some breathing space and a place to go and not to worry about you know gee I haven't got a job yet and I've got the bills to pay and all the stress of that transition that they're going through and that again has been just absolutely fantastic uh, our staff uh, love being a part of it, and it, you know it just um, and it's earned us, and you know unwittingly uh, we haven't really gone after it, but some amazing PR in our area as well. That's great. Did you have a really good response from homeowners wanting to be involved in this? Oh, Brittany, this would blow you away. When we did the 9/11 response, yeah. within 20 minutes, I had heard from 95 percent of my homeowners wow. that they. Said, Give, give them whatever you can. If it's a week in the summer, which is, you know, big money for them, yeah. they wanted to do it. But uh, And for the HEROES program, we had tremendous response from homeowners. The place we had a problem was finding the, uh, the vets. Oh, and wow. We, went, uh, we had to go to a lot of veterans organizations, and uh, there's a, a radio program in Maine that's out of Portland that... Uh, has a big vet following, and uh, they asked us to come on and talk about it. And we we filled, you know, we filled what we had, but it was uh, just so incredible. That's there was one uh, young man who was uh, blind, and you know, one of the questions we had to ask when we were placing people was, you know, do you need any special, um, you know, 
accessibility or anything like that. And uh, he told the young woman he was talking to, he said, uh, I'm blind, but I'm not handicapped. And I thought, wow, what tremendous courage, you know? It is amazing. Wow, that that is such a great story. I really love that, you know, the homeowners were so excited about participating and things like that. And I think it, you know, as a rental manager, that really speaks to what you can do to help get your homeowners involved in and showing them that it's not just about making money. It's about making people's lives better, you know, te yeah. teaching, teaching homeowners that, you know, it's, it's about that you're what you're all about, you know, not just, not just about the area and, and all that stuff, all that stuff's good too. But it, it's amazing that you got such awesome response from all of your homeowners. I just love that. That's amazing. Yeah. It really made a lot of homeowners more friends than they were business associates out of that too. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so what kind of things do you stress to new homeowners? When, when you get a new homeowner in, what do you sit down and talk with them about? Well, you know, my priority is to remember that the rental property uh, that they own is a major investment for owners and that the owners also have an emotional attachment to it. Um, we stress how we protect their second home. We uh, do key management uh, or lock boxes. No open doors with keys left on the table. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, you know people in the area that still do that. That uh, is really kind of uh, security risk and yeah. uh, very uncomfortable to me if I were coming in late into a dark place with the door unlocked and the key on the table. Yeah, that's but, um, You know, there's also a whole bunch of protective management like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, checking the place. Uh, in the winter we offer uh, programs where we can go in and check on the temperature, make sure the water's running, nothing's frozen, and storm preparation. We don't have as many storms as uh, you do, Brittany, down there on the Outer Banks, but we do yeah. get our serious winter storms and we get uh, occasionally get hurricanes too up there. But, um, you know, we will call our homeowners, go out, tape the windows, move the furniture inside. Yeah. And uh, we always want to get guests who are respectful of the home. And um, I don't know if some of our, the VRM people that are on. I don't know if you realize that there is a do not rent to function on the member uh, information when you have a reservation. If you absolutely have somebody who's horrible and you never want to have back again, all you have to do is click that and uh, if they go online to try to book themselves, they won't be able to book. Um, so you don't want them back and I mean occasionally they can get around that by somebody else in their party doing the reservation, but it is a, a safeguard that helps, you know, when you do have that, which doesn't happen often in our business, but it's, it, if it happens once, that's enough. Yeah. That's awesome that you mentioned that, you know, v at VRM, we, re we really try hard to, you know, let everybody know that, you know, all of our, our rental managers that we're behind you, like we're here to help you be as successful as possible. So, um, so that's awesome that that feature is available for you guys and that, um, that you can use that. Um, so what should you do to prepare for a meeting, you know, with a potential homeowner? What do you do that kind of stands out and sets you apart from your competition? Well, the first thing is, uh, you know, we have a professional looking package that we uh, leave with the homeowner and it's got our, you know, it's just a nice folder, it's got our logo on it and it's got some really key material because um, the, the thing is nobody's going to remember everything that you talked about and this way they have something to go back to. But I also don't put everything, every single thing in there uh, because it shouldn't be a manual for your competition. And so I put the key points of the, uh, you know, the fact that we've been in business so long, some of the uh, awards we've won and how we market and uh, quite a bit on marketing and what we do. And um, basically it should be, you know, a natural kind of easy uh, meeting with them. But I think the fact that you come prepared with a folder and with the information they need uh, is 90% of the ball game, but um, 
you know, I, th I thank them for meeting with us verbally, but I also send uh, thank you notes. I'm kind of like Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but I, I utilize those a lot, and I've had people uh, respond to that uh, tremendously. Just a quick, you know, thank you for meeting with me, and my name on, again, a little card that has our logo on it, and it's handwritten. It's sent out as soon as I get back. That uh, tells them something that, you know, that we really do care and we follow through. And then I always stress the benefits of what we do and how, um, you know, doing business with us will help them. I love that. I love the, the personal touch with the thank you notes. You know, that that to me really stands out because not a lot of people, you know, get anything other than bills in the mail these days. So that really puts you back in the forefront of their mind. They're like, oh, they're sending me something kind in the mail. I actually really like this. You know, this is great. And yeah. it leaves them with a feeling of positive interaction for the first time that, you, that you're talking to them. They get a positive interaction with you that they can refer back to um, mm -hmm. later on. So that's amazing. I love that tip. Um, so how can you get people past the hesitation with price points? It's a lot, it's a big issue that I hear rental managers talk about is, you know, that homeowners often they want to overprice their house and they, they don't understand, you know, that their house falls within certain parameters, you know, based on what amenities they offer. So how do you get past that with a lot of people? Well, that is probably the biggest sticking point there is, and it's really tough because, you know, it's just like in sales that people also feel that their home is worth more than anyone else's in the area, and mm -hmm. it's it's a tough thing to tell somebody that they're not, you know, they're not going to make the money they think they are, but there's ways that you could do it in a gentle kind of way, but primarily we give them a price range mm -hmm. uh, with the, you know, the price they want is probably the high end of it, and they will choose to go with that nine times out of ten, unfortunately, but we stress that we'll be communicating with them every couple weeks, and if necessary, we're going to suggest lowering the price or some other options to attract more guests. And um, so we set up that we're going to be in communication and that that may have to happen. And um, you know, we stress that we tend to be on our on the conservative side. We're a little bit more, uh, but we want them to get as many rentals as possible, especially in the first year that they rent, because that's a tougher year to get filled. Mm -hmm. And we stress that um, the many other things that they may get from our company as well that uh, will give them the um, uh, peace of mind that they want. And, you know, I, I try to finally, you know, at the end of it, tell them, you know, you don't want the cheapest commission agency or the cheapest price. You want the best. And that's what we offer. That's a really great point, you know, is, is you can actually use your company as an example, you know, saying like, you know, that quality is the most important feature there, you know, so a lot of homeowners can kind of get, get prepared for, you know, talking about some of their, you know, furnishings being out of date or things like that and giving them points to say, yeah, if you, if you change these things, then you can get the rent that you're looking for or more, you know, so that can, that can lead to a good conversation with a homeowner. So that's a really Absolutely. great, those are great tips. Um, so what are some personal touches that you tend to add that make you stand out? Well, um, all of our literature contains, um, as you probably notice, my pictures of family, but mm -hmm. all of our uh, literature contains uh, photographs of Jennifer and I and our family and staff. Um, and we always uh, try to send that personal uh, thank you notes to potential homeowners or um, even if they don't, they call and say they decide to go with someone else, we still send them a note and say thank you for having met with us. The door is always open. We'd love to have you, you know, consider us again if, if things change, you know. That's great. So we always uh, try to keep that going. But the personal touch is letting them know that we're a part of the community there and that we do care about their property and them. That's awesome. I love it. Um, so how can you make sure that homeowners comply with, 
your quality standards in their home without losing them. Because I know that can be a really big point of contention. You know, they think their 1972 TV that their grandpa gave them is the best thing that's ever happened. And uh, <laughs> they love that Afghan that grandma knitted. But, you know, how do you encourage homeowners to um, put quality stuff into their homes to help them raise their rates? That is a tough one because uh, people often put too many things in their home that have a sentimental attachment and that other people vacationing just think are kind of creepy and weird. Yeah. And, uh, we, you know, I would say that, you know, to discuss that at the first meeting, but um, the primary, primary things that we insist on is that the property must be clean and it must be well maintained. and keeping outdated furniture or appliances, things like that, or not having the right things there will affect them in price. And so we try to let them know that, but in a gentle kind of way. And um, one of the tools that we use, because um, it isn't enough usually coming just from us, we use that welcome home function on VRM uh, to survey all of our guests. And at the end of each summer, we send the homeowners a uh, report card um, oh, that has, uh, you know, tells them what the guests are thinking of the property. Yeah. And if they hear it from them, even though we may, just like your mother, have told you a dozen times, somehow that suddenly sinks in. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> you think I should put a washer dryer in there? Yes, you should. <laughs> oh, what a great idea. You're so brilliant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, uh, and if our um, maintenance department can handle some of it, uh, we also let them know that. <clears throat> and if they need uh, uh, referrals uh, to furniture appliances or outside professionals, we've got a list of sources for them, and we're available to coordinate with those uh, professionals. That's awesome. You know, I really love that um, you seem to have such a great relationship with your homeowners, you know, that's so vital in this business. You know, if, I've always said that, that rental managers are like super human ninja people that can somehow <laughs> balance well, having homeowners and customers. You have literally two different sets of customers and it's just amazing that you can make both of them happy and come and bring that happiness to the transaction that creates magical memories for vacationers and good experiences for homeowners. So I, I just really love that. I love those tips. Well, that's definitely the goal, Brittany, you know, and I mean, honestly, it, it's all down to a great team and we have a great uh, manager at our company that uh, coordinates between staff and guests and homeowners and making sure that everyone is happy and, uh, it's kind of like uh, the guy who used to spin the plates and he has to keep them all in the air going. And yeah. it's, it's pretty difficult sometimes. That is. That's very difficult. Um, so one other question about homeowners is how do you know when it's time to let a homeowner go? Nobody really wants to, to talk about how difficult that might be, you know, just saying, like, look, your, your property's not up to quality standards. You're not you're not complying. So how, how does that conversation go for you? How does it, what does it look like? Well, you know, as, as we said in the previous, um, the information is that we do bring that up when we have, uh, properties that people consistently, um, complain about that there's some things that maintenance or in particular is a big item, but, um, that people complain about and that we have to deal with uh, unhappy customers, that's definitely not the what we want. And if we've done this once or twice and at some point we have to uh, consider letting them go and that is a difficult thing, but yeah. if we've asked them consistently, we try to um, let them down gently, but Mm -hmm. um, we're the ones who have to take the heat from the guests and the bottom line is that we do find that they're not going to change and um, despite how many times we may have asked them and I, I try to stress on our initial meeting with homeowners that having a rental property is a business and so you need to put money back into it you can't simply take the, re the rental income and um, use it all you've got to put money back into it because it is a business and 
we do try to let them down gently, but we do say that, you know, that uh, it can be that our guests are just not a match for their property anymore and that uh, they might be better off handling it themselves or going elsewhere. Yeah, and you know, you shared a story with me that I would really love for you to share with our listeners um, about the homeowner that, that had the faulty um, reeling. So. Oh, yeah. This house uh, that we handle, handled in the past um, looks like a mansion. It's, it's right on the water. It's absolutely gorgeous, but it is so poorly maintained. It is really bad. And we asked this particular homeowner who never spends a penny on the place uh, to fix a railing that, and to fix a number of other things, but in particular uh, there were rotted railings around the decks and their second floor on top of that, um, that um, he put a coat of paint over and so visually we couldn't tell that they were the same rotted deck oh. and somebody, a child, almost fell through uh, the last year that we handled him and we finally had to let him go that we just couldn't take those kind of risks and we know that we don't want anything to happen to our guests or homeowners while they're there, you know, and it was just yeah. too, too much of a liability. Yeah. And that, you know, I think that's the thing that homeowners don't understand. Sometimes it's not out of vanity that you say these things. It's out of necessity, you know, uh, to keep them protected and safe um, in that. So that's always a good thing for you to mention to homeowners is that, you know, this is really for the guest's safety and um, for their comfort and all that kind of stuff. So, um, Yep. So what are two things that you do on a regular basis to improve your homeowner relations? Well, the first thing I would say is communicate frequently with them. And uh, not just one means of communication. Don't just use emails. You, you know, write them a note, pick up the phone, you know, something like that is just a really good idea. And the second thing that I would say is that and it's not really on the basis of, but it's for everything you do, is that your reputation is everything. So be professional and be ethical no matter what. And be dip diplomatic even when the person you're speaking to is not being nice. Don't badmouth your competition ever. And be involved in your community and be the kind of person that they want to do business with. So that that's, you know, kind of a long way around, but um, that your reputation is everything in this business. That's awesome. Well, I think that our next slide is questions. It is. Yay. This is my favorite part of the webinar. I just love hearing um, questions from people that are here. So if you have a question, go ahead and use the, the question feature and go to webinar and shoot it over to me. Um, I already have a, a couple over here that I'm going to go ahead and ask Maureen. Um, is there a way all right, let me read the question. Sorry. <laughs> sometimes sometimes it takes me a second to read it and get my brain around it. Um, is there a way of communicating with homeowners that is more effective than another for you? Well, you know, I would say the person to person is the best if you can do it that way, you know, but I think if it's if it's bad news, uh, at the very least, get on the phone with them. I think that uh, as quick and easy as emails tend to be, they lack that person that personal touch. And I think if you've got to deliver bad news, that you should at least at least call them if you can't uh, reach out to them, and if they're not in your area. Awesome. And I have another one. Um, this one's from Scott. Hi, Scott. It's good to have you on today. Um, how often do you try and be in communication with your homeowners? You know, Scott, it's a, I, I think I fall down on that as much as I'd like to be. Uh, I don't do as much as I'd like to. I think it would be um, awesome if we could be in touch with our homeowners on a regular basis, like every couple weeks or something like that. But I have to say that it ends up being a, a few times a year that we're on a regular um, scheduled basis of communicating with them. And then it tends to be more sporadic uh, 
either you know their price should be lowered or that uh, they're, someone's asking for something unusual for a guest and that we want permission to do that and um, so we're, we're in contact with them a lot but it's not on a, a schedule kind of basis and I'd like to see us being more in contact with our homeowners than we are now but it's something I think we all have to work at. Um, all right, and this also is from Scott, but he said, what are your top three ways to personalize your relationship with your homeowners? All right, Scott. Oh, two questions, huh? <laughs> um, well, as I said, I, I think that um, the communication factor is probably the number one thing, and I do the note thing a lot, and it, it isn't as onerous as it sounds. It's, uh, it's a quick three or four words, and drop it in the mail and uh, people really appreciate that but um, the other things that, something that we've been considering that we haven't done yet is to do a kind of a focused uh, owner get together um, kind of a, a meet and greet kind of thing but that has some uh, focus to it and that we would kind of steer and try to use as a forum to get owners to improve their property and things like that is something that we've talked about doing and we probably will try to put that into effect this this year uh, so that that would work too and um, I don't know I guess uh, number three would probably be the uh, seaside club card is the other way that I think that we interact with our homeowners and we get a lot of feedback on That's I hope that answers the question. <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure if I yeah, did. Or those were great. Those are great ways. Um, you know, do you ever? Um, this question is actually for me. Um, but do you ever have like? Do you have like? Because I know you can have a lot of homeowners. Do you have a um, like a spreadsheet that you use to like keep track of all the information that they tell you? You know, like their kids' names and where they're going to college and like you know their alma mater and that kind of stuff. I I feel like for me, I would need something like that. So how do you keep track of all the information from all the homeowners? That is something I really wish we did have, but we keep it all in our notes section of um, you know our software and. That seems to function, but not in an organized way. I would love to have a uh, um, customer relations kind of management tool to be able to do that. And I think that, and you know, coming from a sales background, I found that that was probably the most important thing in personalizing your relationship and getting people to remember you was to be able to remember them and their their kids going to school a certain place or plays a sport or so I'd love to be able to have something that kept track of all of that but we don't at present so we just do it in note format awesome um and I got a uh, question from Steve and he said um, I know you've already talked about this just a little bit at the beginning of the webinar but can you just reca recap a little bit about the seaside club card again for Steve sure um, what we do is we reach out to popular uh, restaurants, attractions, uh, guided tours. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other things, but uh, basically anything anyone would want to do or go to in our area if they were on vacation. And um, we ask them if they would like to um, be a part of this and what it would involve is offering a discount to our guests and homeowners, anybody who had the club card, and um, in return, we would feature them as uh, on our brochure for for the club card. And I'd be happy to send a copy of what we of what last year's looked like, if anyone is interested. Uh, we change the card every year, so that it has a different look and a different uh, date on it, uh, so it can't be used two years in a row. But um, the restaurant or business has to put a plaque in their front door that says we're a proud member of the Seaside Club card and they get to be on our brochure which we give to every customer and in return they also have to have uh, our rack cards prominently placed in their place and they have to put us on their website. We put them on our website as well as uh, our favorite picks and um, that's been a really good 
really good source of not only referrals but just a great place to make people happy. There have been a few little glitches like a certain waitress at a hotel at a restaurant didn't uh, realize there was a special, and just communications like that, but uh, those are really minor for the overall uh, success of the program. Awesome. All right. And um, this one comes from Stephanie, and she said, do you use third-party websites often, such as HomeAway, um, and do your owners have to pay for the annual subscriptions, or does your company pay for those? Well, unfortunately, we've been paying for them. <laughs> I wish I, we could ask our homeowners to do it. We do do them, but we do them in a limited fashion because we've been in business for so long, 33, 34 years this year. And um, so many, many, many of our, uh, re our reservations are repeat. And um, we don't want to open up our rentals until we place those repeat people which we try to do rather quickly so that we can get everything booked as, as soon as possible. But when we are having uh, falling behind and the regular people have been placed, that's when we generally reach out and use those third-party websites like HomeAway, FlipKey, and um, you know, TripAdvisor, and those places. And they are effective, and they certainly um, you know, bring in um, quite a few uh, well, reservations and questions anyway. There are, I think, different areas of the country. I've spoken to other VRMs, and the one you choose is different almost everywhere. So I, I can't, and I, I couldn't recommend one anyway, but um, I would say that, you know, reach out to some of the people in your general area and ask them which works best for them and um, you may get a different idea than what you have in mind. I know I've uh, been down in Florida for the last few weeks and um, down there they use one that I don't use hardly at all so <laughs> I guess it just depends on where you are where they get the best response from. That's awesome. Um, okay this question comes from Kathy. Hi Kathy, thanks for being on here today. Um, other than existing homeowners to refer other homeowners, what other suggestions can you give to attract new homeowners? Do you ever use door hangers, mailings? How do you develop a list of properties which you want to attract? Oh, Kathy, yes, we do. <laughs> we do all that stuff and more. But uh, let me tell you some of the other stuff we do. Um, one of the things is that, and it depends what state you're in, because some states are... Um, under the Real Estate Commission for Vacation Rentals, many are, are not, but some are. But if you're not, you can um, reach out to area real estate agencies. And even if you are, <clears throat> excuse me, in a state where the Real Estate Commission uh, guides it, but you can offer uh, to help them close their sales by giving their uh, potential buyers uh, rental information. Uh, on what they might be able to get for that property that they're looking at. And um, the understanding is that that agent is going to refer those people to you. And that helps sometimes. And then uh, we make a note on our owner's file if that person does buy and comes to us so that if they do it for a couple of years and decide that it's not for them and they want to sell, we always know who referred them to uh, to us so that we refer them back. And then um, we go after properties that we know are um, listed on some of those third-party sites, and we will look up in the tax records where who the person is who owns the property, or sometimes just driving around saying, oh, I'd love to have some things on this street or that street, and um, finding the tax records. It's very time consuming, but doing some direct mail to uh, the owners of those properties. And also remember that many of your guests will buy someday, so you want to remind them to consider you. And <clears throat> if you work, uh, if you have a real estate company as part of your business, you should include that information in the guest package when they check in. If you don't, then that's a great way to build a link between you and another real estate company. 
<coughs> excuse me. That's, um, that's awesome. That's really great advice. Um, yes, we do direct mail. We do a lot of that. And uh, we do a series. If we're going to do direct mail, we do a series of three uh, pieces, a letter and then two postcards. And then there's um, contacting prior owners that may have tried something else and uh, asking them to come back. Awesome. Those are those are really great um, advice tips. Um, this one comes from Al, and he said, how do you handle damage issues with a homeowner? Well, I hate that <laughs> I have to answer that question and that it exists, but it does. <laughs> so, Al, um, you know, you've just got to be up front that something has happened, and hopefully you have in place either a security or damage waiver type program and the first thing you want to do is notify the homeowner uh, to the extent of the damage and it, that your, their, your protection will cover it up to a certain point and that you know, we need to get an estimate for them. We can take care of it for them or they can get their own estimate. And um, I also uh, strongly suggest that uh, telling the owner that you will take care of as much of this as you possibly can so that they don't have to be worried about that. If it's something that you can do um, without creating a, a big concern, like let's say the people left a, a real mess. It's, just, it's not, nothing's damaged per se, but it's really been dirty and it's, uh, it's going to need additional cleaning. We simply take care of that and just do it. We may make a notation in the guest um, notes section to let us know that this person is questionable. We may ask for a higher cleaning fee the following year if we try them again, or we may not rent to them again. But uh, the owner has to be involved if there's any kind of break, breakage or uh, serious damage of any kind. Fortunately, it's not something we face very often. I can't uh, think of more than, um, you know, if it happens one out of a thousand, I'd say that that would be uh, our threshold when it's really bad. And usually the owners are very um, understanding if you've built that relationship with them already, that you've had uh, that personal touch with them and communication and they know you feel as bad as, as they do, and the bottom line is uh, you can't change people's behavior. There will always be some people that will um, get into a property and treat it badly, but I would go after those people as well, and um, definitely uh, don't rent to them again if they are bad. Awesome, and I have um, another question from Steve, and he said, um, do you use social media to advertise your rentals and attract new homeowners? Well, Steve, <laughs> um, you know, my grandson, Jack, he's the one who's now in charge of our social media. We tried to do this a few years ago and not very successfully. And, um, so now we are using that more, but we, we do use that function of welcome home with that's with VRM very frequently and it serves as a, sort of the same uh, need and not only do we do our surveys through uh, Welcome Home but we do a whole series of emails to a guest. One is um, at least two weeks before they check in we remind them what our check-in time and directions to get to us and so on and then uh, the day before they arrive, again, we do some of the same things. And then the um, day of arrival, if they do have a property that has a key code, an hour before check-in time, we send them the actual key code. Then they're sent, um, you know, how was your, how is your vacation doing? We also do a personal phone call to our guests after they arrive. And then uh, that welcome home function we use again at the last day of their vacation they get that um, survey and questionnaire then a couple of weeks later it's time to start thinking about the next vacation and we start uh, the process of getting them thinking about uh, renting again maybe in a different season so we use it a lot but I like to use it even more 
That's awesome. Um, okay, and our last question comes from Gloria, and she said, do you do anything to reach out to your guests to keep them coming back? I know you kind of answered that a little bit, um, but, you know, just go ahead. And oh, we did something new this year, and uh, it really, uh, it's amazing how uh, people were so excited about it, but we put a great big board up in our uh, check-in area because we do personal check-ins. We put the names of all the people that were coming back that were repeat renters and everyone who was a repeat renter got a, a small uh, bag of coffee that's made in our area that they do a special blend for us called a seaside blend and um, everyone who had um, been with us for uh, more than five or eight years or something, got a, a larger little gift bag with some items in it. And just having their names up on the board, we had a couple of people who wanted a picture taken next to it, and it created a, a lot of buzz. So that was a fun thing to do. And just to recognize them and thank them for coming back again year after year. We've had people uh, that we've had for 34 years coming to us, so I'm now seeing the the grandchildren bringing in their new babies with the people that we started off with. Uh, that's uh, pretty amazing. That is so awesome. I just love that idea. That is a great idea. Well, that's all the time we have for questions today. I'm going to go ahead and announce our next webinar and the winners of a copy of Maureen's book. Um, so make sure you stay on for just one more minute. Um, all right, so next month, we're going to be talking about VRM's new function, Welcome Home, um, which Maureen talked about a little bit today, but we're going to go through it and show you how it can keep guests happy with very minimal effort on your part. Um, and our newest addition to the VRM team, Mike Mueller, um, is actually going to be here to talk to us about it. Um, some of you may may know Mike a little bit. Um, he's actually Pete's nephew, so that's very exciting for us. It's all in the family over here at VRM. We, we love family and um, consider our clients family as well. Um, so make sure you tune in for that. And um, I have my winners right here. So um, I have Scott Erickson, Amber Fowler, Gloria Land, Jason Hyde, and Bonnie Williams. If you guys would send me an email to Brittany at virtualresortmanager.com with your name and your address and your phone number, then I will go ahead and get that information to Maureen and she can send you a copy of her book. And if you do, if you didn't win, I'm so sorry, but you can look tomorrow on the blog and I have a link in there where you can go and look at Maureen's book um, and you can purchase it for your homeowners. It's a really great book to kind of show people what rental managers really do. It's all about the nitty gritty. I just loved reading it. It was a great, a great read for my uh, plane ride to the VRMA show this year. And it was, it was awesome. So make sure you go over and, uh, and check that out on Amazon and make sure you leave her a nice review if you have read it. So I just want to thank everybody again for being here this morning. I appreciate it so much. You guys are amazing and I can't wait to have tea with you again next month. Um, and if you need the recap, it'll be on the blog tomorrow. So thank you again, Maureen, for being with us today. We really appreciate it and we hope you have a good day. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Bye. Bye now.